I took this picture of Landudno Pier some time ago now, and I just like the symmetry of it. I made sure I stood right in the centre of the pier, so we got the lamp here on the right, the one on the left, we got the two kiosks, a couple more lamps, there's a couple more lamps again, and a couple of little kiosks there before you reach the end of the pier. So this was the finished image, and when I was looking at it, I suddenly thought, hang on a second, we could have a little bit of fun with this, and I'll show you what I came up with. We're going to start by coming over to the Layers panel. We're going to duplicate the background layer, so I'm going to use Command J, Control J, that's Command J, Control J to duplicate the background layer. Next, we're going to reduce layer 1 down in size, and we're going to reduce it down in size using Image, Transform, Free Transform, Command T, Control T is the shortcut. That has now put the Transform tool around the outside of the image, but we're not going to touch it. Instead, we're going to go down to the Tool Options. Opening Tool Options, you'll notice where all my grab handles have disappeared, so I'm just going to use Command-0, Control-0, so there it is. We can now see the image again with all the grab handles. The important thing with this is we're going to be using the width and the height, but make sure it's constrained proportions. In other words, when we change the width, because it's constrained, it's now going to change the height as well. Bring your cursor, click inside this window, you'll notice the way it's now highlighted. Using the up and the down arrow, if I use the up arrow, we can make the image bigger. If I use the down arrow, we're making that percentage amount smaller, we're reducing it down in size. So I'm going to take it down to 80, let's take a look at 80, which is there, no, let's take it further, let's go to 75. I like the way 75 is looking. Now I want to drop it down, so I want to realign these uh, handrails here. Now just click outside, you'll notice the way it's no longer highlighted. I'm not going to click down and move it around, because if I start moving it around I'm going to get it out of proportions. But instead we can still use the up and the down arrow. So using the down arrow this time, we're going to nudge it down into this sort of area here, just waiting for those handrails to line up, perhaps a little bit more little bit more again, no, up a bit, right pressing enter or return to apply that transform tool. Right, guess what we're going to do next? Yes, command J, control J, we have duplicated that layer 1, so we've now got layer 1 copy. Command T, control T for the transform tool. Remember the amount we used? It was, yes, 75. So we're going to put in 75 straight away, click outside that window using the downward facing arrow, we can now nudge it down into position, something like that there. Double pressing, enter or return, using Command J, Control J. We have now duplicated the layer again. Command T, Control T, and let's just swipe across. Let's put in 75. You'll notice 75 goes to the uh, height as well. Clicking down, let's just nudge this down into that area, something like this. Double clicking. Command J, Control J, Command T, Control T. Swiping across, putting in 75, clicking outside that window, just dropping it down into position like this would be pretty good. Pressing Enter or Return to apply it. Right, bringing my cursor up, I've got the hand tool, so I'm going to press Command or Control. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see exactly what's happening. I'm going to use Command J, Control J. We're going to use Command T, Control T. There's the Transform tool just going to swipe across this and put in that uh, number of 75, clicking outside that window, using the downward facing arrow to put us into position here. And let's do one more, Command J, Control J, and Command T or Control T with the Transform tool, swiping across. We're going to put in that number, which is 75, and just using that downward facing arrow. Now, I've deliberately made this mistake. I didn't click outside the window. As I'm using the downward facing arrow, I'm making it smaller still. So let's just bring it back until we get to 75. Now I'm going to click outside the window. That was the reason for deliberately making that mistake, so I can show you what happens should you not make sure that you click outside. Okay, right. And just double click into apply. Looking pretty good so far. I've got the hand tool selected, so we can just press down. Let's come to the end here and just take a look at this. Yeah, I think it needs a little bit of realigning, so let's pick up the Move tool. Now with the Move tool, make sure that you've got Auto Select ticked, so make sure this is ticked. Let's drop this down out of the way. Right, let's take a look at this one. Because I've got Auto Select, as soon as I click on this layer, notice the way it goes straight to layer 1. 
Now you can still use those short, uh, those keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to use the downward facing arrow. I'm just going to nudge it down into that area there. Let's click on this one. You'll notice the selection has now gone to layer one copy. We can now nudge that down. Let's take it up a bit. Let's click on this one. So just realigning it all into position like that. And this one's up a little bit high. So nudge that one down, taking it back up into that area. And clicking on this one, dropping that down into that area. And this one, yeah, you get the picture. There it is. Right, once you're happy, use Command-0, Control-0. That's the story so far. Now talk of symmetry, now talk about the end of the pier. I just love the way this works, the way the lamps all line up here, the way we got these two little kiosks. Even the sky is coming in rather nicely. Something else you might like to try. Click on layer 1. We're going to go to the effects here. So it's effects, and we're going to go to the drop down menu. With the drop down menu, select inner shadow. Now, with inner shadow, if you click on this one, you've got quite a large area like this. This one is the low version. You've got with noise, you've got with ridges, and all sorts of various bits and pieces. No, thank you. Let's come back to that one there. Taking a look at that. No, let's go to low. So I'm going to click on the low. Coming up to the little gear cog. Now with this, you can see it's got the angle at being 30%. Swiping across, I'm going to put in 90. So that's now taking us 90. So the angle of the light is coming straight through. Yes, that looks pretty good like that. You can see it on the top. It's not on the bottom. I'm not going to worry too much about that. If you want to apply it to the bottom, try a little bit of drop shadow as well. And you can see the way that just highlights it. But so I'm going to leave that switched off and I'm simply going to click on OK. Let's go back to layers. You'll notice this little FX showing us we've applied a layer style to this particular layer. So now all we need to do is apply it to the remaining four layers. Or there's a very quick and useful shortcut. All you need to do is press the Alt or the Option key. So press and hold down Alt or Option. Click on where it says Indicate Layer Style. Thank you for that prompt. Because you're holding down Alt or Option, as soon as you start to lift it up, notice the way you get that double arrow head. You've got that little FX as well. Bring it up to see that rectangle going around. In it goes, lifting it up to the next one. Still holding down the Alt or Option, don't forget. Lifting it up until we get to the final one. And there it is, job done. Right, well, nearly. A little bit of a finishing touch. Uh, let's use Command J, Control J. We're going to duplicate the background layer again. This time we're going to go to Filter, Blur. We're going to go to Gaussian Blur, and we're going to blur it by... That looks pretty good, like that. 6.6, .6, try it a little bit more. No, let's drop it back down into that area we had. 6.6, .6, I'm going to click OK to that. So we've just blurred it, and you can see the difference that's making to the image. Finally, we're going to go to an adjustment layer of hue saturation. When this opens, we're going to colorize it. In other words, we're going to tone the image. You can have whatever tone suits your picture. My favorite is this sepia, which I'm going to use 39. I'm going to take the saturation down into that area there. And you might want to take the lightness up entirely up to you. You can take the lightness down as well. I'm going to make it a little bit darker into this position. Click OK to that. And there it is. All we need to do now is we've now got Landudno, end of the pier. That sounds pretty good. Just save it as a different file name. So I'm just going to go to Save As, and let's just call it. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap this around. So I'm going to use Command X, Control X, which is now cut that. Make sure I'm the right size of that dot. End of the pier, Landudno. So just change the file name. That is important. We've got a Photoshop file. In other words, it's a PSD file. So I'm not going to overwrite any other existing file of that name. So we've now saved this as a completely different file name. So we know what it is. There it is. There is our finished image. Go on, give it a try. Let's pop it onto a black background as well. Well, a little bit of fun, but I just really like the way this works. I hope you've enjoyed the video. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.